Hello, my name is Zachary Zamor, and today I'll be presenting to you my case analysis of did Toyota's culture uh, cause its problems? Uh, a little bit of Toyota's background. Um, I found this uh, particularly interesting to me because Toyota being one of the largest car uh, and automotive manufacturers in the world has caught a lot of attention. Uh, due to their recall crisis that occurred from 2009 to 2012. Due to their millions of recalls and some of their popular and best-selling brands, um, they have been branded as an improper management and organizational corporate business. Throughout their history, um, they've, been, they've had a very structured and humble culture. However, after their most recent change in power, Toyota has seemed to have adopted a very confident and stubborn and strong type of organizational culture. In this particular case, um, at least 37 deaths were reported due to the unintended acceleration of, of some of the Toyota's uh, vehicles. While everyone else is waiting for an explanation, the Kia Toyota failed to give a strong and proper statement to the public uh, when first hearing of these incidents. This caused an uproar in the media, and consumers surely did take notice. Shortly after, Toyota suffered major losses in sales and in customer loyalty. In a situation similar to this one, Audi was on the verge of bankruptcy due to an interview done on 60 Minutes stating manufacturer issues produced within the vehicles. This put Audi in a very big skid and is still trying to and uh, now we'll go to our next slide. We're going to talk about uh, some of our key issues. Examining the case, uh, there were a few facts that came across um, that were uh, viewed as very key issues uh, in this case. First and foremost, I feel like Toyota violated one of the unspoken rules uh, when crisis strikes a manufacturer. At first, um, at first, when the first complaints came in, Toyota didn't make any moves and refused to recall uh, the different models that were involved in the unintended acceleration accidents. This not only didn't sit well with consumers and the media, it didn't sit well with the government either. After some time, the government issued a $16.4 million fine to Toyota due to the lack of movement of recalling uh, the specific models. Shortly after, Toyota began to build its string of recalls due to the different features of models from 2009 all the way through 2012. Due to Toyota's responses, it didn't give them proper evidence to prove their innocence when it came to the unintentional acceleration. This also produced some uh, nasty reports from the New York Times and management officials all around the world. Stated before, after the string of recalls, Toyota had suffered major losses in profit and share uh, prices as well. The last issue that I believe Toyota dealt with uh, in the case was the lack of know-how when it comes to responding to these types of complaints. Formally, you would like a, a formula or a certain skill set uh, of an individual to come in and be able to handle uh, these situations in a very calm and direct manner and in a proper amount of time as well. Next, we'll look into our key points. During the time that these, uh, during the same time these nasty reports were coming out, uh, independent investigations uh, were going on and uh, revealed that. The cause for the unintended acceleration accidents were due to a human error. Um, mistakes such as confusing uh, the gas pedal and the gas brake, um, sliding uh, your foot too far down the pad, uh, your floor mat, um, confusing the gears. Uh, all these uh, came into play uh, for Toyota when discussing their unintentional acceleration cases. Uh, further down the line, 
the age ranges uh, for the victims for the uh, unintended acceleration uh, were released. And as you can see uh, from the visual aid at the bottom, uh, the number, uh, the age number of drivers uh, averaged anywhere from 60 to 70 years old, uh, resulting in that uh, the elderly could have been uh, responsible for uh, these accidents that have taken place. <clears throat> However, it's almost daunting to think about how Audi nearly suffered uh, bankruptcy due to their inefficiency to properly respond to these reports of faulty manufacturing equipment. I believe Toyota sold their products to Audi Motors when responding to these different reports. After some research, it was reported that Toyota relied on drivers rather than tools to maintain their control and ideology within their business. Once again, Audi Motors is proof and uh, be one of the most competent automotive manufacturers in the world. Toyota believes that there is less need to look back on the past and look only towards the future uh, in safety and refining the product uh, in their vehicles. Next we'll go over uh, if Toyota is not the cause of unintended acceleration, why was it blamed for it? Number two, investigations have shown that after stories of unintended acceleration are publicized, report of incidents increase for all automakers. Why is this the case? Number three, is it possible to have a strong, even arrogant culture and still produce safe and high quality vehicles? Number four, if you were the CEO of Toyota, when the story uh, was first publicized, how would you have reacted? Uh, for answer number one, um, it was a known fact as far in the case um, that Toyota was not responsible uh, for and uh, the cause of the unintended acceleration. However, it was blamed because of its failure to address uh, the issue accurately. When the complaints started increasing um, in, for Toyota uh, concerning unintended acceleration, they should have immediately recalled the vehicles instead of waiting um, as long as it did. This holdout uh, on recalling formulated bad press uh, all along the way for Toyota. Uh, the vehicles should have been recalled and allowed to be checked by their technical experts who uh, can understand these root problems and identify these problems and allow to propose a solution. If they had found out the real cause uh, of the unintended acceleration, they should have issued an, out an apology and a statement uh, to those who have suffered due to the problems and potentially compensate them in some form or fashion. But, if they had found out that the problem was that the elderly um, were just getting the pedals confused, Toyota could have came out with a uh, statement saying that uh, they are going to issue a separate manual um, on how to operate the vehicles in each of their uh, new purchases. However, by not responding uh, properly um, to the problems that were reported, they lost. Uh, the opportunity to prove themselves innocent and couldn't provide any uh, reasons to for anyone else to believe uh, the ones being imposed on them by the media. Well, for answer number two, Toyota made national headlines um, that triggered a wave of increased numbers of complaints for all makers. Uh, typically, when this happens, um, consumers look for uh, any similar um, issues that are found within their car, uh, no matter their respective brand. Um, most individuals report these reports just to report them, um, not due to these uh, issues being a uh, immediate uh, concern uh, for their daily travel. Includes that um, there should be a sudden rise. Um, of complaints reported uh, for all manufacturers.
So any other jump uh, should be seen as normal. And now for answer number three. Yes, it is very much possible uh, to have a strong and arrogant culture and have it turn out to uh, have a very positive impact and still uh, create high quality vehicles uh, and product for their consumers. Is uh, manufacturers that have a strong and arrogant outlook on their culture. Uh, this could discourage misreporting of uh, unrelated problems uh, from their vehicles. Um, give um, the experts and mechanics so much more time and allow them to focus on innovative and different ideas for uh, their progressive future. Um, their intent to provide quality cars with more safety, uh, but they do they don't want to accept any uh, any different forms of complaints that aren't completely valid, and basically allow them to behave arrogantly, um, so that they can concentrate on the work at hand and not be viewed as quote unquote wasting time. Not commonly agreed upon, uh, Toyota seemed to make this a uh, form of culture work out in its favor. And now for the last answer, number four. If I were the CEO of Toyota, I would have immediately wanted to held a press conference and uh, potentially meet with our board to figure out our next steps uh, after these stories have been publicized. Um, I'd want to ensure that we're doing everything that we can uh, to figure out what's linked to these accusations. Um, I'd want to put out a statement that way that media is held at bay and this will give us some time to uh, do our own internal investigations and research what's going on uh, after these solutions are drawn by the experts. Uh, we can hold a final press conference setting out uh, a clear statement um, and the results of what uh, Toyota had found. Organizations, um, came back that there were uh, manufacturer issues, potential of giving uh, out a compensation to each of the different families affected. And now um, our conclusion. Uh, overall, Toyota has created and managed uh, one of the top automotive uh, companies in the world. Um, they have a strong business plan and a strong culture. Um, and if they are able to stick to that as shown, their uh, profits and margins are going to be able to grow uh, throughout the years. Toyota should be able to uh, figure out um, their new methodology. In the future, Toyota um, should be able to figure out um, their unresolved issues uh, with some of these manufacturing um, and developing issues. Toyota is uh, developed and devoted to uh, making quality vehicles in safety and in presentation. Although Toyota's methods are not fully understood, uh, they have to be doing something right and still be one of the leaders in their market. Toyota needs to conduct constant evaluations in the development of their organizational culture and training programs to handle and ensure complaints uh, get handled as well in a timely manner. As you can see, after the Toyota recall crisis, they seem to have regained themselves and caught their stride going forward. And with that, um, that will conclude my presentation. Uh, here's a list of my references, and thank you for sitting in today. Thank you.